Hey everyone, Ramel here, and I'll be going through my desk setup so far for 2022. If you're new to this channel and haven't seen my previous setup tour videos, I'll have those linked up here. I was in a six and a half by six and a half square foot room, so this has been a huge change in terms of space. I'm able to fit everything that I need to, and I have my rig, a TV, and my desk, which is pretty big, and the Alex shelf over there. And I'm gonna go through almost everything on this side of my office. I will be saving the back side for a different video, um, more closer to my camera gear, my storage, as well as all of my lights, um, just because I'm, I haven't really finished that area. It took me quite a while to get this area set up for a video. Um, so yeah, if you guys wanna know when that video is out and wanna see kind of like how everything works together, um, hit that subscribe button so you know when that's out. But in this video, we're gonna focus on the desk, all the stuff on the desk and the accessories. The one thing that hasn't changed with my setup is that I do use it for everything that I do. I am a full-time software engineer that works remotely. I do a lot of gaming and content creation. So so everything that I do happens around this desk and sim racing as well. I will have links in the description below. If you wanna know all the products, most will be affiliate links. And again, if you guys use those links, I really appreciate it. It does help out this channel. I will also link all of the videos that I have out for um, the reviews for parts of this desk. And if I don't have a review out, I probably have one planned. Um, some of the stuff I'll go into more details in this video as well. And yeah, let's just get to it because there's quite a lot to cover. Let's start with the desk. This is the Solo Riser by Progressive Desk and this has been an amazing sit stand desk. This is the largest size that they offer and it measures in at 70 inches by 30 inches. The tabletop I went with is the white tabletop and the legs are the black legs. If you want a more in-depth review, I'll have it linked up here. The one thing that I mentioned that I didn't like about the desk is that it has a rectangle grommet dead center. It is now covered up with this Baydeer monitor riser. I got this monitor riser a few weeks ago and it has remained on my desk. The big things that I like about this riser is that it comes with a built-in wireless charger as well as this USB hub. For my gaming PC, I am still using the 3900X 2070 Super build that I built back in 2019. It's still able to run all of the games that I play um, on the ultra wide. They're mostly competitive shooters, but it hasn't really been an issue for me. The one thing that I would want to upgrade is probably the graphics card. I do have to run some of the sim racing titles at a lower setting like ACC just to get it to have a nice constant frame rate on this ultrawide monitor. But I feel like we're getting really close to the 4000 and the 7000 series that I may just wait until those are released to upgrade. Another big change is that I am using a Mac Studio now instead of a MacBook Pro. I realized that I was plugged in 99% of the time and when I was programming or editing videos, I was in this office space. I never had to do it on the go. So when they announced the Mac Studio, it just made sense to upgrade to that. I really wanted to try Apple Silicon and see what it would be like, especially for Premiere Pro and video editing. I will have a full video on the Mac Studio in the near future, so stay tuned for that. My gaming PC and the Mac Studio are plugged into the same monitors. The secondary monitor is the Gigabyte AD27QD, which used to be my main monitor. It is a 1440p, 144Hz IPS panel. And at the time, I envisioned it being my main monitor for a long time because it had all the specs that I needed for gaming, content creation, and programming. But it has been replaced by the Alienware AW3821DW. This monitor is amazing. It is a 38 inch ultra wide monitor that is an IPS panel. And it has been amazing for everything that I do, whether it's programming, gaming, content creation, and sim racing. It's one of the best purchases I've made in the setup and it really, gives me the flexibility that I need to have this one setup 
kind of thing where I am using it for everything. I do have a full review video on this out, which I'll link up above if you want more details on this monitor. Both of my monitors are mounted on Ergotron monitor arms. The ultra wide is mounted on the Ergotron HX and the portrait monitor is mounted on the Ergotron LX. For my monitor light, I'm using the BenQ Screen Bar Plus, which is sitting on top of the AW3821DW. I was using the regular BenQ Screen Bar, but BenQ reached out and was kind enough to send over the Screen Bar Plus for me to use and review. The monitor light has been a great addition to my setup. It lights my desk area really well, and there is zero glare on the monitor. A big benefit of using a monitor light is that it helps reduce eye strain if you're staring at a monitor for extended periods of time, which I am since I'm programming all day and sometimes even at night. For the BenQ Screen Bar Plus, it offers a desktop dial for you to control the light. You can control the temperature as well as the brightness levels of the lamp itself directly with the dial. It also has an ambient light sensor, which you can use to set the temperature and brightness automatically if you don't wanna do it manually. The other great thing about the monitor light is that it takes up no extra space on your desk and it is powered via USB, which I've plugged directly to the back of my monitor. It turns on and off when I turn on my monitor, so I don't have to worry about having to turn it on and off manually. The other great thing is when I'm building keyboards, it is an amazing light. Speaking of keyboards, right now I have the Think 6.5 V2 2U as my main keyboard. It's built using navies and it has the nice PBT Fuji keycaps. The desk mat that I'm using is the Fuji desk mat since it does really go well with the keycaps. For the mouse, I am still using the MX Master 3. It is getting a bit of wear on it, so I might upgrade to the 3S if it gets even worse. For my gaming mouse, I am still using the Logitech G Pro Wireless. I have a bunch of mice that I've been planning on reviewing, but I just haven't had the time to, to get better at Valorant and play out a more competitive level like I was when I did my previous mice reviews. Well, I feel like when I'm doing mice reviews, I don't want it just to be casual games. I really want to see what it's like in a more competitive setting. For my mouse pad, I am using the Aqua Control Plus by X-Ray Pad. I was using the Glorious mouse pad before, but I have since switched to the Aqua Plus. I do have a couple of the Artisan mouse pads, but like the mice, I haven't really been playing competitive shooters at a level that I want to, to really see what the benefits of a a mouse pad would be like. Hopefully in the near future, I'll have some time to dedicate at getting back into the rhythm of playing Valorant or CSGO. For the peripherals that I need to switch between my gaming PC and my studio, I do have this USB switch that I have mounted underneath the desk. The keyboard, webcam, and the scanner is connected to this. One output is connected to the studio and the other is connected to my gaming PC. When I switch inputs on my monitor, all I have to do is press this button underneath my desk and the input switch as well. For the rest of my cable management, I am using the progressive cable trays and these are awesome because I can kind of go with the out of sight, out of mind. I kind of just stuff my cables um, here and I can't really see them. The power bar also fits nicely on this so I don't really have to have them dangling down. I have them facing away. So you only see the back of the power bar itself. For my audio setup, I am still using the Bear Dynamic DT990 Pros for my headphones. For my microphone, I'm using the Rode Procaster and these are both plugged into the Go XLR. This setup has been amazing for me and I'm really happy with it. I don't think I'll be changing this anytime soon. Um, this audio upgrade has been one of those things where I like buy once, cry once. The only thing I have changed was instead of using the Blue Compass, I'm now using the Elgato low profile um, mic arm just so I could get it completely out of the way and in the back over there. 
for my speakers, I am using the Kanto YU2s. These have been an amazing pair of speakers. I've never had speakers on my desk setup. I've always used headphones. So this has been a welcome change. It's really nice to be able to sit back, not have to worry about headphones and just listen to music. Um, these speakers sound amazing and I'm really happy that I went with the Kanto YU2s. The only thing is that I do have them oriented sideways now. Um, I haven't noticed a big sound difference, but I, I've heard that it's better upright. I haven't been able to find a good way for these to fit with the uh, monitor riser. So for now, they're gonna stay in this orientation, but it honestly hasn't sounded much different to me at least. For the rest of my desk, I do have a couple of these fake IKEA plants. I do like how they look. Uh, it gives my space a little greenery, even though it's not real. Beside the IKEA plant, I do have this Game Boy Apple Watch charger thing, which looks really awesome and I really like that. And I have an artisan tray in front of it where I keep my artisans, which I'm starting to collect. I do also have this Asui figure that my daughter got me for Father's Day. She knows I like these little blind box bags, so she got me one and I opened it and it was um, Asui from My Hero. I do also still have a stream deck that I use when I stream occasionally. For my webcam, I am using the C920 and I do have the Elgato master mount behind my monitor where I mount my um, X-T4 when I do stream on Twitch, which has been pretty rare, but I, I hope to stream a lot more in the near future. To the right of my desk, I do have the Alex drawer that I keep a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, um, keyboard tools, cables, memory cards, um, headphones. On top of that, I have my Epson scanner for when I need to do some film scans. I do have some of these. I do have a printer underneath the NAS in the back as well, which is the DS918 Plus. Um, that's filled up with um, the Iron Wolves now. And I do have a set of weights that I have down here um, to remind myself that I should probably exercise, but I, I really haven't exercised at all. And for my chair, I am using the Herman Miller Aeron. It is getting close to the end of its life. The armrests are falling off. The chair hasn't really been staying um, where I've set it. So like some days I need to readjust it to go up uh, cause it just goes down automatically. Um, so yeah, I, I am thinking of upgrading my chair soon. I'm just not sure if I wanna go with a Herman Miller Aeron again, or if I'm gonna go for the M body or try a steel case or another option out there. But yeah, the chair is probably the next upgrade, side grade that, that I'll be doing just because it kinda is starting to fall apart. To the left of my desk, I have my sim racing rig where I swing my monitor over um, to do sim racing. The, the rig itself is the advanced sim racing ASR3. The wheelbase is the VRS DD. I have a couple wheels. One is the Sparco wheel that I have mounted right now. And I do also have the cube control formula wheel. I have the Thrustmaster shifter. And for the pedals, I have the Husingveld sprints. I also have the Husingvelt um, e-brake. I do plan on doing a full review on both the direct drive as well as the pedals. I promise you those are in the works and they will be released soon. Um, so stay tuned for those. Behind my rig is a TV. This is the previous TV that we had in the living room. We upgraded to the Samsung frame. Um, so I decided to move this into my office space. I use it mostly to watch anime and my PlayStation 5 is plugged into this TV right now so I can enjoy gaming in 4K. Previously, I was always gaming on one of these monitors and I do have my Nintendo Switch plugged in here as well. And there is a sound bar uh, for the TV. And it's just sitting on top of this Besta. For the lighting, it's a little bit of a mix of several different products. 
I have the U play bar still behind my monitor and I have the U strip behind that as well. My thinking with staying with the U there is that I could use the U sync while I'm using my gaming PC. Um, so that changes based off of the content that's on my gaming PC. For the light, I have the Govi light on the ceiling. I have the Govi lamp over here. And then I do have a set of nano leaf panels um, along this wall. Having them mixed with different brands hasn't really been a big issue. I run everything through Alexa, so I'm able to turn on and off my lights um, with Alexa, create different scenes through the Alexa rather than the individual app itself. And yeah, everything just works really nicely with Alexa. Uh, for my posters, I have some posters on this wall. Um, I have an Into the Spider-Verse, an Initial D. I have some of the artwork that my daughter has made me. And then I do also have a Your Name poster, Demon Slayer, My Hero Academia, and a Jujutsu Kaisen poster over there. I, I do plan on changing this up in the near future. I just found that having these posters would be the quickest way to have not a blank wall. Anyways, that's gonna be it for the setup tour. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about anything in my setup, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer. If you want a more in-depth review of a certain product that I don't have a review out for yet, um, leave that in the comments as well and I'll do my best to try and make a video on that. I do have the keyboard video plan, the rig video, as well as my camera and lighting setup. Um, so hit that subscribe button if you want to know when those videos are out, but that's going to be it for this one. Don't forget to follow me on my socials, which I'll leave in the description below as well. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.